Live from the Peterson Event Center on the campus of the great University of Pittsburgh, this is the Pat Narduzzi Show inside Pitt Studios. I'm Larry Richard with head football coach Pat Narduzzi after an unscheduled bye week nine and Virginia Tech senior day at Heinz Field at 4 o'clock on Saturday. Coach, it's the world we're living in. We sat here a week ago, and you kind of had that look in your eye like, we don't know what's happening day to day with the COVID. So after your Zoom call with the press last Thursday at 1 o'clock, a few hours later we find out the game with Georgia Tech postponed till December 12th. Nobody at the University of Pittsburgh has ever been in that position before. That, that was disappointing to everybody for so many reasons. No doubt about it. And, you know, most disappointing for our poor kids. Um, you know, as coaches, we work every day. It's what we do. Um, you know, we don't slow down. We prepare every day like it's the same. And, you know, you kind of put those blinders on, knowing what's going on outside, you know, in the rest of the world. And, you know, and our kids work their tails off every day. So they practice like the game. And then all of a sudden you find out, you know, th- you know things aren't good on the COVID end of things. And, and uh, disappointing for our kids. And, and it's the same thing you walk into this weekend saying, can we play a game? Are we good? You know, are we ready to go? And, and uh, you know, you're going to find out later in the week, which is unfortunate because our kids are like, why are we practicing if we're not playing? They want to play. And we want to coach, and, and we all want to be safe as well. And you did practice uh, yesterday. You got back on the field. So you, you're doing what you need to do. Just curious, though, in that week on Saturday, and you talked about it on Monday, the disappointment in frustration of maybe watching some other college games that were going on even though there were a number of others that were postponed as well yeah Larry I mean you know like I said our coaches work from you know we're in the office from 6 a.m. to 10 o'clock at night every day and you're you're game planning you know you're trying to win you're trying to give you know the kids as every advantage they can you're meeting with the kids all during the week our players that are practicing they're meeting there they're there at 6 a.m. getting therapy taking care of their injuries getting ready to roll and then all of a sudden you find out on a you know, Thursday afternoon that, you know, we're not going to be able to play that game. and we're not, It's not safe for us to get on a flight and head down south. You know, to spend two hours on a flight is, is just not right for our kids. It was a right decision uh, by our administration. So that game is rescheduled again for December 12th, and hopefully things will go well for this last game at Heinz Field for many of your seniors with the senior day. And as we mentioned last week, and we're going to discuss tonight, it's different than ever before because you've got the waiver for everybody playing this year of eligibility. So there's some decisions to be made. How will that work for this weekend on Saturday? Well, you know, we're gonna, you know, I've talked to all the seniors, and uh, you kind of have a pretty good feel of, hey, these guys are gonna they're gonna move on. These guys want to have another year, and then there's a few of them that are saying, hey, I'm not sure what I want to do. I want to see how these final three games go, which is uh, probably good. I mean. What you see is exactly the way it should be. I mean, the three guys or four guys that are saying, I want to see how the rest of the year goes, is uh, probably the, the right move to make. And heard from Patrick Jones today. He was asked about that for him to stay to play this year. And he said uh, he was asked what was gained by doing that. And he, he explained he was able to fine-tune his skills and really be in a better position to showcase what he can do when he plays at the next level. And we all think – He's going to perform well when he plays on Sundays, too. No doubt about it. You know, Patrick Jones made a good decision. I think I've talked about it a little bit uh, on Monday at my presser. He made a good decision. He's made himself some money as far as what he's put on the field this year. And, um, you know, from what I ga- you know, from what I gather from, you know, a lot of folks out there in the NFL, uh, he'll go pretty high. So you take all the work that you did last week preparing for Georgia Tech, you slide that over, and that'll come later. Now you – change your focus to Virginia Tech you said something that really resonated with me and you said even though you didn't play it kind of felt like a loss because you didn't get to play yeah I mean we lost the COVID you know the COVID game and you know we've won that all year and you know and I've said it probably every Thursday interview that we've done you know post practice at noon or one o'clock whenever we have that uh that uh that session is you know the first thing is we've got to earn that next game and it was disappointing. You sat home, and we're supposed to be playing. I mean, I'm sitting at home Saturday night, and all of a sudden my phone buzzes, okay, like everybody's got a phone, and you got your calendar and phone. It says, you know, playing Georgia Tech in 15 minutes. I mean, that was never taken off my calendar. It's like, oh. and you kind of look at your phone, and I'm like, oh. yeah, you know, it's like, are you kidding me? And, you know, the phone didn't lie. We were supposed to play him, and it's just like, 
it just hits you at you know 6:45 like oh we're supposed to be coming out of the locker room right now and and uh, and getting after Georgia Tech. Well, on the show today, DJ Turner is coach's featured guest. He's the redshirt senior wide receiver who came over from Maryland. Looking forward to talk to DJ. We heard a lot about him coming in, and he hit the ground running literally on game one here for the Panthers. And we'll also talk about some of the seniors as senior day will be Saturday at four in Heinz Field. We appreciate you being along with us. You're listening to the Pat Narduzzi Show and the Pit Panthers Radio Network. Welcome back to the Pat Narduzzi Show, Larry Richard. Let's talk about Senior Day because you're not going to get much of a chance to talk about it otherwise. Uh, and and Saturday, you probably remember that moment when you were a player in, in uh, college and even high school probably thinking back. It's so important because Patrick Jones was asked about it today. What are your thoughts of your last game at Heinz Field as a Panther? And, you know, he kind of thought about it. He's like, well, I'm focused on Bird. Virginia Tech but you know it is a special day it is a special day for every one of our seniors and you know it's a special day for you know the coaches it's a special day for the players their families their mom and dads their aunts and uncles um and and it's it's a sad day you know it's a it's an emotional day for our kids um you know sometimes it gets too emotional uh and you know um you know I I always liken it to you know you know these the, the moms and dads have dropped their sons off you know, at, at the at the bus stop to go to kindergarten and saw them off. This is like the last time they're going to see them off the bus at Heinz Field to go play that football game. And it's a special moment when you're going to kindergarten and first grade and second grade, and you probably remember those walks out to the bus stop. Um, it's the same thing. It's that last time that the parents are going to get a chance to see them in Heinz Field and play in that Pittsburgh uniform. And it's uh, our, our seniors have played, you know, played well. Uh, they've been a great representative of the University of Pittsburgh in all facets. Um, it's not easy to play four or five years at this level and and be as committed to the academic uh, part of it as they are. Uh, they're all, you know, half of them are probably three quarters have already graduated in grad school. So uh, it's a special senior class. And I think about the fact that they understand maybe this year more than ever, based on living under the COVID pandemic, that things are fragile in real life. That's that's how life is. And your team doesn't seem to have taken that for granted. I've noticed in all the conversations over the last few weeks, they appreciate the man playing beside them too and something they will take with them for the rest of their lives. No question about it. We talk about adversity after wins and losses and, um, you know, being able to handle success. But you talk about the adversity this entire team and staff has been through this year. We'll never be through a harder year than what we did in 2020. I, I Absolutely believe you're right. And any particular seniors jump out? Obviously, you have so many, and you probably don't want to miss any, but you got to talk about some of the guys that have uh, uh, gone the extra mile with the Panthers and, and been with you the entire yeah. time. Well, I'll start with DJ Turner because he's sitting sitting right here getting ready to jump on the next segment. You know, a young man that came in here, um, you know, wasn't going to play in the Big Ten. The Big Ten season was canceled. Um, and, and said, I'm, I'm playing, you know, I, I want to, you know, I want to go play this year and, and was able to come transfer in here. Uh, we can talk about that when he gets on a little bit, but he's had a fantastic year. I mean, he's been electric as a punt returner, kick returner, forget what he's already done at receiver. Um, you know, he plays pretty much all the receiver positions and, um, you know, he, he's, he's been a football player for us and, um, you know, we, we're excited about what he's done this year. Then I'll just, you know, so I don't forget anybody, you know, really talking about the captain, he's in Kenny Pickett. I mean, right. look at the year and the career that Kenny Pickett has had here at the University of Pittsburgh. You know, from that first start he had at Miami when we knocked off people to where he's, you know, played this year, gets beat up against Boston College and, you know, finishes that game when he probably should not have finished the game. You know, went in a tent, got a shot, and came back out and, and said, you know, matter of fact, he told the doctor, just give me a shot, I'm playing, you know. And, uh, you know, he went out there and, 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 uh, and finished that game and, um, you know, brought us into overtime and, um, you know, 
should have got us to two overtimes. And then, you know, he comes back from the injury and then gets back to Florida State and gets to work and played against a great Florida State defense and operates and, and, uh, and plays good football for us. And Jimmy Morrissey, what a, what a terrific player he's been. What a surprise from walk-on to stardom. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> guy's played a lot of starts here. He's uh, intelligent. He's got a you know, pro career as well um, as, you know, uh, as, as a bunch of guys on the football team. But, um, you know, he, he's a leader of our offense. He's a two-time captain, uh, like you said, a walk-on that's come in and played a lot of great football and a guy that everybody on our offense trusts. Yeah, he's somebody every player looks at and goes, this is what hard work can get you if you're looking for inspiration. And when we come back, we will talk to – Coach's special guest, D.J. Turner, the redshirt senior graduate transfer. Looking forward to that conversation. You're listening to the Pat Narduzzi Show on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. Welcome back to the Pat Narduzzi Show. Larry Richard with head coach Pat Narduzzi and coach's special guest, redshirt senior graduate transfer, wide receiver from Maryland, D.J. Turner. D.J., good to see you. It's good to see you too, man. You fired up? You ready to go? You ready to play some ball? I'm excited. I know it was a big disappointment to be ready and then get this unscheduled uh, week off, but uh, I'm sure you're ready to get back at it. Week nine against Virginia Tech and you guys both have the exact same record, four and four, four and three in the ACC. Uh, they're a good football team too. And uh, as coach, you always say, "Hey, those guys are on scholarship over there." But I know you're looking forward to playing uh, Senior Day at Heinz Field. Now, you're a new acquisition. You decided to come to Pitt. What made you make that choice uh, as you got here late in August? Pitt was just a place where I, I would feel comfortable with uh, the coaching staff being at home. I had a prior relationship with, with Chris Beatty, and then my brother knew um, Coach Narduzzi, so I felt like it would be a, a good spot to kind of just go in and get acclimated and, and make some things happen. Yeah, Coach, you had an interesting recruiting option with DJ's brother, Mark. Yeah, Baby Hayes is, was Baby his nickname. Baby Hayes. We used to call him Baby <laughs> Hayes. He was a D-tackle, and, and um, you know, he gave me a call one day. This is how the whole thing started is, you know, I got a, you know, got a little brother. I'm like, little brother, you know? And uh, he's, he's pretty much a, you know, big brother, really. Uh, but I recruit his, his uh, brother, Mark Hayes, at DeMatha Catholic High School in, in Maryland in, uh, in Hyattsville. And, um, you know, I'll never forget the visit. I walked in there with the head coach to the school, and the head coach wanted to see how tall he was. And he looked pretty tall. And uh, so we walk in there. He looks tall. Coach Keith, the head coach at the time, Floyd Keith, says, you know, if he's tall, we're going to offer him. So we get in there. Coach calls him down, comes down to the office. We offer him. And then we've got, you know, a home visit scheduled later that evening at his house. So we get to the house, knock on the door. We go in. He doesn't have any shoes on. He looks a lot shorter now. <laughs> it's a classic story. And, you know, so we had a great home visit with his family. And, you know, we re reunited with his family. You know, just that whole story. And then we find out that, you know, at the math that they would roll, that, you know, it's a Catholic school, so they have ties. Okay, everybody wears a tie. They all have extra ties in their locker. So what they would do is go to the locker. When you know Coach McGregor would call them down, they'd go to the locker, grab a tie, roll it up, and put it in the heel of their shoe, <laughs> one in each heel. And they came in, they looked tall. And then when we got to the house, he looked short. Now, it didn't matter. You know, the size does not matter. You know, Mark Hayes was a great D tackle for us. He was a great football player. You know, played a stint in the NFL as well. Um, but just a tremendous family. And, again, those relationships you have with your former players. I mean, he called up and said, hey, I don't know if you remember me. I'm like, you know, I already still had his number in my phone. You know, his number popped up. Oh, wow. It never, it never left my phone. So you, you stay in touch with those guys, and sometimes you lose touch, and all, you know, all of a sudden it comes back to you. And we were able to get, 
you know, such a great player in DJ to come to Pitt. And, you know, that was one of the reasons. And obviously, Chris Beatty was a big factor because he coached him at Maryland. That's a great story. And, DJ, we heard a lot about you when you decided to come to Pitt and you did hit the ground running. What What has your experience been like here in Pittsburgh and playing for the Panthers? Being in Pittsburgh has been great. Like, I've, I've never lived anywhere outside of Maryland until now. So I feel like just kind of going, coming here and kind of, Trying to get comfortable in a new city would be good for me and and my family as well. So um, that plus, I mean, I've I've earned I've got a new family here in Pittsburgh with the with the team and the coaches now. Like they all kind of welcome me in with, with open arms, and I mean it's been great ever ever since the first day. Yes, you do have a new family, and you keep putting up numbers like you're putting up. You're going to have all kind of new friends too, <laughs> especially down the road. You're averaging 16 yards per catch as a receiver but as a return man I always wanted to ask you when that ball and you're looking up and you're <laughs> what's going through your mind just make the catch right yeah the, the biggest thing is to make the catch like you don't you don't want to drop in and lose field position or get a ball back to the other team but you try to figure out if you got enough space to make a return or or if I need a fair catch it's a, it's a lot to kind of process in a little bit of time but it, it it's fun it's fun to me so I, I enjoy it to me that's one of the craziest moments in football is is when you're looking up for that ball and those guys are coming down to take your hat off all right it's kind of like playing quarterback you know there's two positions i'm not sure i really want to be a punt returner or a quarterback with that pass right. rush coming or six men coming at you and you're standing back here trying to find that open guy those are two of the hardest positions to play in my opinion i'm curious dj when do you decide i'm gonna fair catch this or i'm gonna go um Sometimes I decide like as soon as he kicks it. Like if it if it's a, a real high ball, it's gonna hang up in the air for a long time. I I just go ahead and call it a fair catch. But if it looks like I'll have a little bit of time, like more of a line drive ball, and our gunners, are, I mean our uh, our jammers are doing a good job, then I I'll probably take that one. What's that like? You catch that ball and you know you got some room to run, some yak yards after the catch, right, DJ? Yeah. No, nah, I mean it is uh. You try to get as much as you can. Like you, like I said, it's a game of field position. Like so, if we're backed up, try to get us on the other side of the field. If we're, you know, what I'm saying it's just, it's just do as much as you can to help the team win. That's that's basically my whole thing. You know, one of the things that was exciting in the last game uh, down in Florida was the fact that Kenny Pickett was able to play. He's got a great arm, and I know he was a spark plug for that game. Yep. No, he's a, he's a great leader. I mean, it, it shows. Like, quarterback is a hard position to play. It's the hardest position to play. So, I don't, you don't never want to show up to quarterback because they're, they're doing the hardest job. So, um, I applaud Kenny, especially coming off an of injury and leading us to that victory. And Jordan Addison, who's had a spectacular freshman season, looks up to you. And, you know, you guys all work together a lot as receivers, uh, sharing some of the knowledge in your case right i mean he, he's a great player he, i can't i can't wait to see what the future has for him like right now he he still has no ceiling there's still a lot of getting better to do for him he's still young but he'll he'll be one of the one of the best players that come through this uh through this program in my opinion well pitts casey garrell does from inside the bubble 10 questions by the way this saturday you're going to hear from patrick jones the redshirt senior defensive end uh what it, was the best advice you ever received and from whom probably probably just never quit anything that that you're passionate of doing like just always find a way to make it happen I, I i've always my parents have always instilled that in me and made sure that no matter what you do if you choose to do it you give 100 percent and, and don't give up and casey always asked and this is one of our favorites coach we we find out what your pump up music is and we hope that we have some idea who you're talking about um, I mean, I I kind of I kind of switch it up a lot. Like I'm I'm from the DMV area, so I I listen to a lot of a lot of rappers from there. Some I listen to some go go music. If you guys have ever heard that, uh, go -go just, music, the go go's. Coach, I, you yeah. know the go go's. I don't think that's what he's talking about. But <laughs> no, nah, it, it might. I think it's a little something different. But um, just it, it's not it's not it's basically what keeps me calm and and kind of even killed on Saturdays, and um. It helps me a lot. Like I don't, I'm, I'm not one of those guys that gets super riled up before the games. I like to just stay calm and, and stay in the moment. So that's that's what's big for me. It's Mr. Important. Smooth, Mr. Smooth. Well, go go on, music. Maybe I need to get some of that. Based on the way I see him play, coach. That's uh, right. You got to be very focused to be a receiver. Right. You yeah. know, and that ball's coming at you. I've I've always marveled the the talent it takes to do that, especially when they talk about combat catches, of which you've done a great job. 
Right now, it's, it's definitely big to kind of not let the moment get bigger than you. Like it, it, making the catches, like you, it's something we do a lot in practice. You make a lot of catches, and you kind of just got to stay calm and and do do what you do. What do you do to relax outside of football? I know studies. You got finals coming up. And of course, you're a grad. This is old hat to you, but what do you do, DJ Turner, to just kind of chill? Um, I, I'm a big movie guy, so when I'm just home chilling, I find a good movie to watch and kind of. Just chill, trying to get my mind off football and everything else is going on in the world. It kind of you helps. got a couple favorite movies because Coach is a big movie guy. He's seen one movie in 20 years. <laughs> um, yeah, I got a I got a couple favorites right now. I think uh, it's a it's a murder mystery movie called Knives Knives Out. That's my I recently watched that actually on the way to um, Florida State um, on the on the flight or whatever. So that I'm pre- I've been pretty big on that. I've been trying to get my whole family to watch it, get their opinion on it. So that that's pretty. That's, that, that's a Netflix. Right is it? It was. I I think it, I watched it on HBO. It was a theatrical release originally, and then yeah. it's been on all the streaming devices. So you know, huh? Hmm. I do. Okay. See, I don't know. And what do you want to do post football? How well, do you see DJ Turner in the future? Um, I'm. I think for right now, I'm not 100 percent sure, but I think I kind of want to get into coaching, and teaching, just um trying to help out the youth the best that I can. Like I know, um, it's been. A lot of coaches and teachers that have helped me get to where I'm where I'm at right now. They've changed my life tremendously, and I feel like um, I can do the same for a lot of kids back in, in the area I grew up in. You know what? That's a great and admirable aspiration. <laughs> Coaching and teaching can never be a bad thing. And looking after the youth, uh, they need leaders like you in every community. And we're excited that you're here in Pittsburgh. Looking forward to you playing Virginia Tech. Good luck Saturday at Heinz Field, DJ. Thank you. I appreciate it. D.J. Turner, (laughs) Touchdown Panthers. When we come back, former Pitt quarterback Pat Bostic will join us. You're listening to the Pat Narduzzi Show on the Pitt Panthers Radio Network. Welcome back to the Pat Narduzzi Show. Coach Pat Narduzzi is joined by former Pitt quarterback Pat Bostic and Associate Athletic Director of Major Gifts. I'm going to Patrick. record that and just like put that in my email when someone receives an email from Why me. Why do you make that your ringtone? I might do that. You're calling the Major Gifts guy. <laughs> anyway, Pat, good to see you. Looking forward to Virginia Tech. Uh, you know, Panthers are five and one at Heinz Field against Virginia Tech. It always seems this is one of those ACC, you know, your division opponents that you see every year. So uh, let's talk about their coach. I know that uh, you know him very well, Justin Fuente. He's in his fifth season at uh, the Hokies. Yeah, Justin does a great job. He's you know um, revamping their defense. Obviously, he's an offensive guy, and and you know, I think they're one of the top ten rushing offenses in the country wherever they are, um, you know, they rush the football. It's going to be a lot of quarterback runs with Hendon Hooker. He's the guy that's making things tick. Um, you know, I think he I think he started after the third game this season, but uh, they got a great rushing game. They, they have a great scheme. Uh, they're very detailed and meticulous with what they do and how they do what they do. There's a lot to it more than just running the football. It seems like every week, Pat, we're talking about dual threats in the quarterback, and that's pretty much how it is in college football. But it, he, he's an exceptional athlete, too. Yeah, they, they do a nice job tying him into the run game. Quarterback powers, they, they run the toss with the trap behind toss it. Toss read. Toss yeah. read. And um, they got some good tailbacks now. You know, Khalil Herbert's a stud. I mean, he's 212 pounds, thick. Um, he's a great compliment. Blackshear kids, a transfer from, I think, Rutgers. Mm-hmm. Um, speedy. And they've, they've got some guys outside. I mean, I think Trey Turner's a good receiver. They throw some RPOs to him. And little 83, Travion Robinson, they run him around. In the slot, they'll come in the backfield. They'll sneak them across the formation. So they do a nice job marrying their run game to their pass game, and they put you in a lot of conflicts. Coach, what makes uh, Hendon Hooker a unique challenge for your defense then? You know, I think it's, you know, playing with 11 guys, that's the number one thing. I'm not sure he's, you know, like Florida State's quarterback, Travis, um, was down there. Uh, he's, this, he's a better passer, I would, I'd say, than Florida State's quarterback, you know, just trying to compare the two. Uh, he's got good speed. You know, he's not a physical runner. I mean, he's gonna he's gonna make you miss more than he's gonna try to run through you. He'll bend over and 
and, and, and take some hits. So we're going to have to, you know, give him some shots. When he wants to run it, we're going to have to take shots and gang tackle him. Um, but I just think he's, he's probably more of a complete quarterback than, than what we saw at Florida State, um, you know, because he can, he can hurt you with his feet. And again, he's got more speed and elusiveness in the back end. Um, and, again, I think he throws a nice ball. We're going to see a lot of push-off fades on the outside, RPO fades, which we've seen in the past, and they've done it again this year. Again, on defense, Bud Foster, as you mentioned, no longer there. He's kind of was always the signature of this team in terms of uh, their defense. They're not too far from where Bud Foster was schematically, uh, but they got some pretty good linebackers too. They do. They're playing a lot more zone. They're still four down, um, you know, a four, two, five, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, they look similar to us. They're going to play some quarters, but they play a lot of man free, you know, cover two. Um, but they're not as much man. With Bud, they were probably, you know, a lot more press man and, and just get in your face. They are not like that anymore. So they've just taken a step away from, you know, what Bud did defensively. Yeah, I mean, they are they got 30 sacks on the air. I think they're second in the conference to you guys. The uh, the Reed kid, the, the boundary defensive end, a, a nice player. I think the Diablo kid, the safety, long. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've got guys. I mean, they've, they've recruited the, the defensive side of the ball really well. They've got veteran linebackers. I feel like Ashby's been there since 2010. Um, you know, he's a, he's a stud, but they do look different. I remember when we started playing Virginia Tech and everyone talked about Bud Foster back in like the early 2000s, they played the invert coverage where the safeties were down and the corners were way back. They got away from that. Um, started playing, like you said, a lot more man free, but you see a lot more off coverage with them this year. And they're a little younger at corner, uh, than they've been, but they're solid and, um, they thrive on getting turnovers and, and creating problems in the backfield. And they, they do that pretty well. Pat Bostic, we'll look forward to hearing from you with your color analysis. The taco, what was that? Uh, taco, soft I don't know. taco, hard f- taco. Uh, uh, food's not never far from my mind. So, <laughs> it's uh, Saturday, four o'clock kickoff in Heinz Field. We'll be on the air with Pat Bostic, Bill Hillgrove, and Kale Berger at two. All right, partner. Thank you. We'll see you, Coach. Uh, good luck against the Hokies and four o'clock kickoff. Thanks, Larry. We want to thank our executive producer, PJ Kamanchik. Amanda Soleil, producing here at the Pete, does a great job. Kale Berger back at Master Control, plus his game day contributions. Fitz, Paul Barto and his team. And inside the bubble, Casey Garrow, they do an outstanding job. You're listening to the Pitt Panthers Radio Network.